Hi, I am going to demonstrate how to segment an MP2 Rage dataset in Brain Voyager here today. This segmentation will be a decent one, not a very careful or very detailed one. And it will be for quickly looking at the, for instance, activity maps on a, a quickly created surface. So transitioning from the volume to the surface and quickly looking at some maps. So it is not meant to be a very detailed and correct segmentation and mesh reconstruction pipeline. Okay, that being said, let's go. Here I am quickly loading some nifty data or importing them as uh, VMR files. You can see that here I imported the uni image. Now I am importing the inversion one and inversion two. Here I am going to use MP2 rage denoising that makes use of this uni inversion one and inversion two images. After quickly loading them and pressing go with the default options, you can see that I ha now have a denoised MP2 rage uni image that looks like it has a nice T1 weighted contrast. Now I'm going to do a brain extraction. See that I used minus 10 as my parameter. And this brain extraction is a bit too uh, tight and maybe sometimes like taking pieces away from the gray matter. Therefore now I'm going to smooth it with a large Gaussian and then I'm going to rebinarize the a section of it. Hopefully you can stop and see which parameters I used. Okay, now using F8, F9 and load secondary VMR options, I can overlay my brain mask on top of my anatomical contrast image. And you can see that here I am looking at the yellow boundary and actually reducing it a bit because for what I'm going to show today, it, it's better to have a very tight brain mask than a large one for making the rest of the pipeline work. Okay, now you can see that I went to the went back to the intensity in homogeneity correction menu. And since I have this nice brain mask here, a tight one, I just press go and it does its intensity in homogeneity correction, you can see that the white matter and gray matter values changed slightly differently. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is to do isovoxeling to 0.5 mm isotropic resolution. My image, initial image was at 0.7 mm isotropic resolution. You see that I changed the file name to state 0.5 and then I pressed go. And now we will wait a bit. The interpolation to 0.5 mm resolution is done. We are going to proceed with ACPC alignment, anterior commissure, posterior commissure. First, I'm going to find the anterior commissure point. Most easily, it can be found in the transversal axis. You see that I find the anterior commissure, pressed OK. And then next, I'm going to find the ACPC plane. This, is, this often requires you to rotate a, a bit around the X axis. And here you can see that I am rotating the, around the x-axis until I see the posterior commissure nicely in the, along the ACPC plane in the transversal view. I press uh, OK and then transform ACPC using uh, the, the following interpolation parameters. After the ACPC, Transformation is done. Now I'm going to find the correct Talara box points. However, we are not going to interpolate to the Talara space. This is just for some other uh, parts in the later advanced segmentation pipeline to work better. So see, I am going through the each of the Talara points and then checking if they are the right ones. Sometimes if needed, adjusting using the set point button and then the the menu to select across different points. 
Okay, from the left side, I find the box too. Now I'm going to visualize the Talrah box. This should encapsulate the brain. That looks all right. I'm going to save it, but I'm not going to apply it. That's all we need. We are still in the ACPC 0.5 millimeter resolution space. Now I'm just reloading the 0.5 millimeter ACPC data. And here I am transitioning to the advanced segmentation tools menu. First thing to do is to load the Talara file that I have computed or saved and then pressing the label as white matter button. So this is useful to fill in the ventricles in our anatomical image, which is handy for the further segmentation pipeline. And then I do the same, load the Talara file again and remove the cerebellum this time. And you see that now the cerebellum or most of it is gone. Each of these steps can be improved and I might have a like a super advanced segmentation tutorial in the future. But for now, we are just constraining ourselves to be to stay inside Brain Voyager. OK, now I am applied the Sigma filter previously and switch to the white matter gray matter border menu. And first thing to do here is to press on calculate button. You can see that it is computing and doing something with the gradients. Once it is done, I just go to the menu below. So usually in Brain Voyager, menus work from top to bottom and left to right. So now after calculate, I went to the white matter, gray matter segmentation button and then pressed go. And you see that now my white matter became filled with the blue color. This looks all right for an initial segmentation. And once this process is done, I look around a little bit and go and click the polish button. This is going to magically uh, improve the white matter borders. Polishing of white matter is done. I'm going to transition to the gray matter CSF border menu and only click to dilate to CSF. So this part right now is not so important because we are going to only use the white matter segmentation to visualize a, a 3D triangular mesh surface later. So if there are like pieces that doesn't look too right here, don't worry for now. Also, this is for a like a decent segmentation, not a not a like a very good one, carefully done, very good segmentation. So it's it's all right for our purposes right now. After dilating to CSF is done. Similarly, I click on the polish button, and again, this will magically improve the gray matter segmentation, mostly the outer parts of the gray matter. Okay, now the gray matter polish is done. I'm going to switch to the hemispheres menu and then press on disconnect. This is a handy button to just disconnect two hemispheres so that we can visualize each hemisphere separately. So, so far we are done. Um, it went okay with the advanced segmentation uh, tools. Now I am loading the right hemisphere, only the white matter surface, as you see, that is disconnected and prepared. There's this yellow uh, boundary around the blue. So this is what we are going to use to create or reconstruct the triangular surface mesh. See that I went to the meshes menu, clicked on create mesh and reconstruct, and it gave me this a bit blocky looking hemisphere and I now am going to do uh, advanced smoothing using the button in the meshes menu. This will take a little bit. Now I am in inspecting my mesh. You see that it is not perfect. There are some like hanging pieces, maybe little holes, but it's okay. It's like decent. It is good for some purposes for quickly looking at your activity on the surface, for instance, on the white matter surface. Okay, now I computed the curvature using the background and curvature colors menu. And now I'm going to inflate this mesh uh, using the meshes mesh morphing menu. Here I'm just using the default inflation parameters and you can see that the mesh, the crumbled folded mesh is now being inflated.
the inflation is done I'm inspecting my mesh it looks all right there are some holes maybe some like spikes bridges but that's okay for the scope of this tutorial we might look into the details in another tutorial okay that's it so this is the quick Brain Voyager advanced segmentation pipeline to create a like a decent and quick surface mesh uh, and I was here using Brain Voyager 22.4 for Linux have a nice day